Hey everybody! I'm back with another Tool Time Tuesday video. This time we're going to be looking at the Laser Packer 2 laser engraver. We've already looked at the Ortur Laser Master 3, but this is a little bit of a different setup. It's kind of apples and oranges as far as comparison, so stick around and let's see what this one can do. The Laser Packer 2 can also engrave a multitude of materials, including stone, slate, cork, wood, canvas, glass, um, leather, uh, lots of lots of different things. The biggest difference between the Laser Packer 2 and a lot of the other machines, which are sort of gantry style machines, including the Ortur, is that the Laser Packer 2 is portable. And it's one of the few engravers that can be controlled by an app. They have an app for iOS and for Android. I believe they also have uh, programs for Windows, but the apps for this particular laser engraver work really well. They're super easy. And you can make final adjustments within the app, like cropping and image size. So you would want to have your image mostly done and ready from another program. But if you need to make it larger or smaller, um, depending upon what your preview looks like, you can do that within the app and you can also just crop things out. How cool is that? Yes, I'm a ding-dong and I didn't do the preview where I should have centered it on the circle better, but this is what I've been most excited about having a laser for, and that is to be able to permanently put my logo on the bottom of a bowl and to be able to sign it. So this is my signature. We'll get back to how I did that in just a minute. I want to show you guys one of the other cool things about this unit, and that is the base is adjustable. So the base goes up and down, but you can also rotate or tilt the laser unit. The maximum size you can do on the Laser Packer 2 is 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters. And so in this instance, the diameter of my bowl is larger than will fit underneath the laser unit if it's attached to the base, but because I can tilt it, I can set it at the appropriate angle for whatever I'm using to hold up the, the workpiece with and engrave it on more a horizontal plane. So you're limited on the size of the image that you can create, but you're not limited on the size of the workpiece you can create the image on because you can tilt it or you can just remove the unit from the base and use it like that. The shroud comes on and off really easily, and in this case, I am going to leave it on and use it to set the focal distance of the laser. That's a really nice feature of this unit as well. You can either just use the orange shroud as your, as your distance, there's also a little foot that flips down, or you can just use a ruler if you take the shroud off. So on the first bowl, I said that I forgot to look at the preview to make sure that it was going to burn the image in the correct spot. Um, I'm going to try to show you that a little bit right here. It's going to be easier to see the laser part of it a little bit later, but you can actually move where it's going to burn with the app. So you just hold your finger on your image and move it around until the outline preview is where you want it to be, which is also really nice. So you can just tweak it with the app after you get it close. Doing the logos is really fast. There are a couple of options as far as resolution. You can do 1000, 1300, or 2000. I've been doing my logo just at 1000 and as a binary file, and it literally took two minutes to engrave this on the bottom of the bowl. Okay, so now we're going to get back to how did I get my handwriting to burn along with the logo. I don't have any Android devices, so I don't know. I assume that this would be similar on an Android. But basically, I have my image in my photo gallery uh, through my iOS devices, and I edit the photo, mark it up, and then I save that. Once I've got the image marked up, then I'm just going to airdrop it back to my phone, which is what I'm using to control the Laser Pecker app. And then it shows up in the app's photo album. So from there, I can just select it and burn it like normal. 
The preview lines show up a lot better in this next clip. So what I was talking about earlier, you set your size in the app and then you can look at a preview and it will give you the outline of where that goes. And then you can move that around and then you can still make adjustments and look at the preview again to make sure that everything is exactly where you want it to be. These are gonna save me a ton of time. I've been making what I call Great Lakes Shark Boards and I've been wanting to include the identification on each of these custom boards as well as my logo. And so what I've been doing is using these aluminum business cards and tricking my Cricut into engraving them, which is a giant pain in the butt. It doesn't come out really well. And then I had to build a router template so that I could route the correct recess to accept the business card. And then I had to cover that in resin. And this is going to be just fabulous. I'm going to put the laser pecker 2 down where it needs to go and I'm ready to roll. So I've got the unit mounted back in the base and the base has a vertical travel that is motorized which is really nice. You just use the orange cone for anything that's flat and that gives you the proper focal length for the laser. I wanted to try this out on some actual projects and then I also wanted to just do some testing and see how things came out on a variety of different materials. So I went scrounging around the shop and I found a handful of different things that I could play around with. Those of you who've been with me for a while will know that fellow bear girls Marie and Lori are both quite accomplished artists and so I have a plethora of material with which to practice. All of these round images Marie did for Touchstone Pottery and they actually get shrunk down and then silk screened onto porcelain jewelry. And since they're black and white images with a reasonable amount of detail, I thought they would make good test subjects. So the bison skull was done on a piece of cherry and this little saw wet owl is done on a cork coaster. The app displays all of your settings along with the image that you did at the end. So I just take a screenshot of that and then I can make a database of what materials I'm using with what settings and then that's going to save a lot of time um, and hopefully hassle down the line. The next material I'm going to try is a 6x6 tile from one of the big box stores. I don't know if this was a wall tile or a floor tile. I do know that it's not coated. You know, it's not shiny. It's relatively porous. So um, I used the stone setting in the app to start with and figured we would just see how this went. And how it went was slow. It's the same kind of file that I've been using for all of my other tests. It's just in the different material. And this definitely took a lot longer. While the cork coaster only took two minutes, this stone tile took about an hour and 20 minutes. The Laser Pecker 2 is pretty versatile in that you can use the base in several ways that we've already looked at. It also has a couple of different modes that can be utilized with an optional third axis. This is what they call the trolley mode. And basically the third axis, which has the rollers on it, it's turned upside down. And rather than the material passing over the rollers and underneath the laser, the entire unit is moving down the line. So you're still limited to 100 millimeters tall, but you could make a sign as long as you wanted to in trolley mode. The third axis has three different modes. That's trolley mode, slab mode, and cylinder mode. Um, this is the trolley mode. The slab mode is actually similar, except that the workpiece is supposed to pass over the rollers and they have these little blocks with roller bearings on top. And that's supposed to help support the workpiece as it's going over the rollers. And I could not get that to work. It seemed like mine were just a little bit too tall and so it wasn't it wasn't sitting properly. Um, the cylinder mode however worked really nicely. One of the things that I really wanted to try was to see if you could make a design go all the way around a cylinder um, and you absolutely can. I just did a quick spindle turning to have something to play with 
and it's not even, which is why my design didn't line up. Um, the one that is on the unit right now is a dowel, and so it is round. And you'll see that you actually can make a design that goes all the way around and lines up if you have the length correct. So I used one of those flexible tape measures that you use in sewing to get the circumference of the dowel, and then I burned that as the length, and it lined up. So I was pretty impressed with that. All right, I have the little silicone bands. Actually, they're the largest ones. I didn't think they were gonna fit on this, but they did. Because this is a relatively large tumbler, I have tilted this so that I have enough room. This is gonna be my range finder for the correct distance. I did a test piece because the hardest thing about the third axis is lining it up and knowing which way it's gonna print. So this on the app printed that on the tumbler in this orientation. try a little denatured alcohol. Well, that works for me. Let's see if I can get close up here. So yeah, I'm impressed. The quality is really good. And the fact that you can hand hold it and that it's completely portable, I think is going to be a really nice feature for a lot of people. So if you're looking for something portable, you should definitely check out the Laser Packer 2.